Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet, and welcome to the SEMA 2022 episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. So here in the Toyota booth, I found three sweet Land Cruisers, starting with this HJ45 Troopy from Australia, built there by a young man on a 79 series chassis, and he did a really cool job. So there is something very unique about this, and we were lucky enough to be here when Builder, one of the builders anyway, was here. Uh, this engine, one VDT, I didn't think it would even fit in the hood of a 40 series. Yeah, How'd you was... make this fit in there? Um, um, so we had to use a couple of tricks and build the trying CAD first, but the chassis cut out a tiny bit just to fit the oil pan in between the chassis rails of the of the original 45 chassis. And then, yeah, just had to change around a couple of things because it came from the factory with like a top mount intercooler. So we had to front mount the intercooler and make up a whole new exhaust um, and the steering column is about like that far away from the from the engine so we had to make sure that it didn't rock so it would push in to that but yeah like it's tight but it works definitely he said it's a little bit modest when he said i had to change around a couple of things yeah it's a, <laughs> yeah, lot, it's a lot of things that had to be changed so, the other day we were talking about this and you told me something really interesting about a test that you had to put this through to make sure it's road legal um yeah, so, so in Australia, we we have uh, to uh, engineer our cars and make sure that they're absolutely perfect, perfect or otherwise you can't drive them on the road. They will do you for anything that is deemed flexible. Like your wheels, they can't be outside of the guards or whatever. Um, but yeah, like to get this thing road legal and tested, we had to do a, sh a worth test around some cones where they, where they take the car up to about 100 k's now, which is 70 -ish. 60, about 60. Yes, yeah, 60, yeah. 70 um, um, miles an hour, and then so we're uh, from one lane into another and back, and yeah. Uh, the first time, it almost uh, went wrong, so we beefed up these away bars a little bit, and then, yeah, it's it's perfect, and it drives amazing. Are they riding with you when you do this, or just? Um, um, oh, so they, I said they have to drive the car, so I'm oh. I'm outside of the car and I just have to watch them absolutely just hook it in. So <laughs> it, it was terrifying, but yeah, it passed. So that's beautiful. pretty cool. You know, we're lucky here that we don't have to do stuff like that. And I hate yeah, to say it, absolutely. but there's probably a lot of builders cars that wouldn't be able to pass after something like that. So exactly, yeah. So it keeps all of our cars safe, even though even though it's really harder to fail at that test. But yeah, it just it's just an extra level of a. Right. The swerve test. The swerve. All right, man. Great build. Yeah, yeah good to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your show. Much. So, what could be more over the top than a Patriot Camper 6x6 VDJ 79 Land Cruiser? It fits in perfectly here at SEMA. And there's not just one, there's two. So another one of the really cool Land Cruisers at SEMA, of course, is one that we brought. 1986 FJ60, body off restoration with some really cool aftermarket goodies. I'm mean, really excited to show you this one. And this car actually just drives home from here. It goes to LA. So we're not gonna get a chance to film this back at the shop. Guess we better look at it here. So being that this is SEMA and this is an aftermarket show, we decided to bring a Land Cruiser with a really big aftermarket part, a suite. LS3. 
So whether or not you agree with putting a V8 in a Land Cruiser, you cannot argue with the practicality of a swap like this, especially for a California resident, which is where this is going. It's the only way to do an emissions legal swap and it's gonna keep this rig on the road for years and years and years to come. When we do decide to swap an aftermarket engine in any Land Cruiser, we always want it to look like it was meant to be there. This swap was designed to look as OEM as possible. This LS3 is coupled to a Toyota H55F five-speed transmission and is kept cool with a really sweet radiator from the guys down at Be Cool Radiators. Other aftermarket accessories on this FJ60 include an easy on K9 roof rack from Paul at Equipped Expedition Outfitters in Salt Lake City and Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers rock sliders on the bottom, as well as the sweet custom wheels that we designed made for us by KMC. So the inside of this FJ60 looks pretty doggone stock. As a matter of fact, these are the original seats and the original material with the exception of a few patches that we made here and there. Luckily this stuff just holds up super, super well. We do have our PRLC Tuffy box with wireless charging uh, and a really nice stereo system in here along with our LED light upgrade which is really, really cool. Of course, we also added the safety of three-point retractable seat belts for the rear passengers of this FJ60, as is standard with most of our restorations. So FJ60s are nice because there's actually room for speakers and stereo equipment, right? FJ40s are much, much harder. This has a nice stereo system, uh, four speakers, and an eight-inch subwoofer, and I want to talk about how to mount those subwoofers. A lot of times people will just bolt speakers, subwoofers, things like that right to the cargo panels and the door panels. That never works. These are just thin cardboard masonite, MDF, something like that, held to the car with plastic clips. Bolting something this heavy on there, it's just gonna end up on the floor and that happens all too often with FJ60. So what we've got behind here is some 16 gauge sheet metal, uh, CNC cut to match the opening and the speaker is bolted through to that sheet metal through the cargo panel So it's very very rigid and hard. This is super securely mounted and it's not going anywhere That's how you want to mount your equipment your speakers and subwoofers in the back of these FJ60s And of course a really cool accessory on this rig are these gold wing windows from Emu Wing. And these are the ones that are sort of trimless, so it's just glass and it's a much cleaner look when they're closed, plus they provide awesome access to the inside. So this being a body off restoration, the underside of this is absolutely spectacular. While we're down here, let's check it out. You guys heard me say this 60 series is a body off restoration. That's exactly what it means, the body came off. It was on a rotisserie and every single refinishable surface has been refinished. On the underside, all of the original sound deadening material was removed with a much better coating, our two-part polyurea spray liner. You know, we love these cars. In fact, we love all vehicles. And so every once in a while, we see something that just shouldn't have been done. And that's why we like to say, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So this is a SEMA stop it. I've probably done this stop it before, but I've reminded of it on a couple of rigs I've seen inside. Just this cross member is not the most high tech cross member in the world but it is definitely way cooler than square tubing and or round tubing and or channel. So transmission cross members are probably one of the most commonly messed up thing on an engine conversion. It seems like people think, ah, whatever holds the transmission up is good with me. It's not. If you're making a mitered square tubing cross member and you're thinking that it's nice, you're wrong. Uh, this is much better looking and it's very, very simple. Um, in this case, this cross member is just cut out of half inch flat material. Um, it bolts, in, in this case, right to the FJ60 transmission cross member mounts that were there. Can't get easier than this to do, but visually very much more appealing than a square tubing or a round tubing cross member or for, you know, God forbid, channel, something like that. So anyway, uh, let's up the quality on the cross members, um, especially if you're doing high quality work everywhere else on the car. Catch up, catch up to it. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs>
So this thing, mind blowing right here. If you don't know, this is a Toyota Stout pickup. Uh, I totally geek out about these and so does Bob, our body shop foreman. You guys know him from the show. This is a full tube chassis race stout. I didn't think I was gonna see one at SEMA. One day we're gonna build one for this show because they're that cool of a truck. Just, just look at this. I know this isn't an off-road build, but this guy would be one heck of an off-road fabricator. And it's a Toyota, kinda. This is Camco Callis' uh, Scion FRS, and it's complete tube chassis, all hand-built. And this guy's got some skills. He's one of our young gun uh, participants in Battle of the Builders, and he's doing really well in the competition. This thing is sweet. Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet, and I'm the truck and off-road judge for Battle of the Builders. That's going on stage behind me right now. The 12 finalists were just selected, and there are three four-wheel drive vehicles in the top 12. I'm telling you guys that SEMA Battle of the Builders is an amazing contest, and I am calling you out. If you're an off-road builder, you need to build a high-quality vehicle and get it entered in this contest. It's an amazing experience, and you won't regret it. SEMA Battle of the Builders. Thanks for watching our special SEMA 2022 episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Be sure to tune back in all year for more Land Cruiser content. I brought one pair of pants. I'm in a poofy coat. Jaden's in shorts. And I have no jacket. On. <laughs> I'm okay. enjoying winter. We don't get winter in California. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Ready? And action. So another one of the really cool anchors here at SEMA is, well, the one that re... Uh, re rob re 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 already got... Bloopers. Huh? All right. Yeah. All right. I can see. How close do you want me to be? Because I can see you right there. Uh, like waist ahead. Waist ahead. Okay. Waist to head. Waist to head. Come in head. <laughs> waist. To head. <laughs>